as many 1e4 players know, Black's response e6, known as the French defence, is one of the most frustrating openings to try and play against. Main lines like this are very difficult for white to prove any advantage and often seems like black has the upper hand in the majority of cases. Of course you can try and play a two knights French along these sorts of lines. <clears throat> this offers no real advantage to white in the long run, at least in my experience, and so I'd like to recommend the move B3 known as the Horwitz attack. And you might be saying, yeah, the computer evaluation says that it's better for black. Well, okay, but black's got to prove that. It's not so easy to prove. So, in today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a game that I played in Online Blitz against a very strong opponent recently in this exact line. I'll, I'll, I'll outline some of the general ideas of the opening and the way that it plays out in this game, which is quite typical for the way that the opening works. I also have several other videos on my channel which also have game analysis of this opening where I've played it successfully in other games, so please check that out if you're interested. But with that said, the whole point of the opening is not to take, it's not to take, it is to play bishop b2 and go take me. And I have videos on my channel where my opponent takes and you get lines like this. White tries to win the pawn back, push the g-pawn to dislocate the knight. Dislodge, that's probably a better word. Keep this diagonal open, castle queen side and just launch a big attack on the black king side. That's not what happened in this game. Because after bishop b2, my opponent played knight f6 and refused to take the pawn. This is going to happen a lot if you play this opening. Because it's kind of scary accepting a gambit. If, if you're looking from the black side, if you don't know this opening, or even if you do know it, it's kind of scary just trying to pawn grab and trying to play against this monster bishop and... White's very easy development, right? So my opponent plays knight f6, which I see really often. And the point is to go e5, and after the knight retreats, there's many moves you can play. The computer likes d4, but I'm not really a fan of this because it just allows c5. And c5 comes with a threat. Another way to play this is to go for a setup of f4, and queen g4 and the point is that after queen g4 the computer calls it a mistake it's not a mistake once c5 is now played the c5 pawn isn't actually hitting anything because you just don't play d4 and that also means that this diagonal is less blocked so that if this pawn ever takes anything then the diagonal could open up in the future or if f5 gets played and something like e6 to open up potential discoveries in future positions. This bishop is not dead, despite the way it looks. So f4 just supports the pawn, right? The queen puts pressure on g7, meaning the bishop is going to struggle to develop. And the queen is not vulnerable because <clears throat> knight f6 isn't possible, and this bishop can't attack the queen because the pawns in the way. So you can kind of get away with violating some opening principles in this particular opening. We have knight c6 just developing, knight f3, and my opponent plays d4, which is an odd move because it gives me the light squares. I go knight a3, which is the typical square to develop this knight to in the opening, not c3, but a3, and looking at ideas of c3 and d4 potentially. The knight maybe threatens to come into d6 at some point. And here my opponent plays f5, which is just a bad move. I see this move all the time. Not in this particular, like, exact position, but when we have 
this structure of pawns, I have so many opponents to play f5. Even in classical games, you know, high-rated opponents. And the point is that if you take, then knight takes f6, and black's very happy. You know, you have to move the queen, the knight might come into e4, maybe ideas of e5, the f-file is open for black, and white losing the e5 pawn means that white loses a lot of space in the center. And despite what you may think, en passant is not forced. You can just drop the queen back, maintain this pressure, and go bro. What are these pawns? What are the... you know, you all know what the what are those thing. Anyway, it's just a weak structure. e6 can be vulnerable in the future. And f5 weakens this diagonal. <clears throat> so after a6, stopping my knight from coming in, I go c3, just challenging the center a bit. We have knight b6, assuming my opponent is trying to rotate his knight to d5, but it's important to keep this d2 pawn where it is, so that if the knight ever does get into d5, then you can maintain control over e3 and c3. Before I knew that, that was important, I've, you know, messed up in several games where I've ended up pushing this pawn and this knight has just absolutely killed me. So bear that in mind, this deep 2 pawn is really important. So I castle queenside, which is typically where you want to castle in this opening, to leave the option of pushing the h pawn. We have knight d5, I take on d4, my opponent takes back, and I go knight c2. <laughs> this is apparently not a great move. No, it is actually a good move. It's, it's, it's literally the computer's second favourite choice, and it calls it a mistake. With its first choice being king b1. Like, okay then, sure. Whatever, stockfish. Knight c2. We're just putting pressure on this pawn. So my opponent goes knight b d b4. I trade, go king b1, defending a2. And this pawn is hanging. Now obviously, if I take here first, then knight takes a2 check. Knight drops back, and black retains material equality. Whereas after king b1, this pawn is still hanging. So he goes knight c6 to defend the pawn. But this is a bit passive. And I play knight g5, which is a typical idea in this opening. And the point is, after queen to b6, you can play knight takes h7. Now this isn't the best move. Because black doesn't have to take. If black takes, then queen g6 check and you win the exchange and a pawn. And black can't castle. So you're winning. Black can ignore it though. <clears throat> and he should play king f7. Knight goes back with check. You could take the bishop, I suppose. But I'd probably like to keep the knight on the board. King moves. Maybe bishop c4. Again, going after this weak pawn. <laughs> And it's just way, way easier to play with white, this position. My opponent goes knight e7. <clears throat> which looks to be trying to cover up the g6 square. My arrow's been really weird, I don't know why. So I just drop the knight back, because now he is actually threatening to take. And I'm like, look, this is still weak. This is still weak. My bishop's about to come out. Your pieces are terrible, and your king is not going to find safety anytime soon. So, my opponent continues developing. We have bishop c4, going after e6. I'm not actually threatening to take it, but I'm putting pressure on. And my opponent plays knight d5, because this knight needs to go somewhere so that this bishop can get out, so that the king can castle and the rooks can get connected. But after takes, takes, and e6, this bishop comes alive. Because once this pawn disappears, all these dark squares look very vulnerable. My opponent can't take the pawn. Because after takes, takes, whoops, you've lost your queen. Because it's pinned. So e6 is an important move. So my opponent moves his bishop because it's under attack, right? 
Who's the bishop? I go knight f7, which attacks the rook. Rook moves. Here I could take the rook. And if I'm being 100% honest, I literally didn't even notice that I could take the rook. I was too busy looking at, like, attacking my opponent's king. So I instead played rook he1, which is still a good move. My opponent can try and save his rook if he wants, but looks like I have moves like queen h4, dropping the knight back. This pawn is a monster. I'm still completely winning, obviously, because black's position, his position is just falling apart. His pawns are so scattered, and his king can't castle because my knight is attacking one of the squares the king has to move through. Can't castle through a check. So my opponent plays bishop to b5. Then I actually notice, oh, the rook's hanging with 20 seconds. So we have takes, takes, queen g6 check. King moves up to e7, check. And king d6, which is just an odd move because I can play bishop a3 check. Look at this nice little crisscross. King moves. And queen d7 is checkmate. King is just trapped in the middle of the board. Black didn't even get a chance to develop these pieces. And that's a really common theme of the opening. Because this bishop always struggles to develop. And that is kind of set in stone from move 5. Because if the bishop moves, g7 falls. And you might say, okay, well why don't... I is black, play g6. Well, yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Say we get a similar setup. And something like... I mean, it's hard to play, make moves with black, to be honest. But say you go bishop g7. I mean, what about moves like h4? If you go h5, drop the queen back. Well, maybe to h3. And g4 is going to get played. I'm going to develop this knight. I'm going to castle queen side, just like I did in the game. And then I'm going to go, okay, this is not sustainable. I'm going g4 to break apart your structure. And I'm going to crash through. Which has happened in previous games for me. And it's been really successful. The whole point is that this is a really weird opening right? This whole idea. <clears throat> and you can have a look at my channel for other uh, videos in this gambit where my opponent does take. But the idea is that you just um, you avoid all the mainline theory. There's a good chance your opponent hasn't seen this many times, if ever. And you know the theory. Because the French defense is a popular opening, so you're going to face it a lot. And you start to learn the intricacies of where the pieces should go. You know, like I said, knight a3 is the place for the knight. Previously, I've played knight c3 in a classical game. And whilst I won that game, my knight was really awkward. And I realized in my post-game analysis, no, the knight goes to a3. And when I mentioned the pawn should stay on d2, because I had pushed it before, and then the knight was able to get in with the support of a pawn on d4. Then I realized, no, okay, the pawn belongs on d2 because these squares are really important to control. And I've already got enough control of these squares, so why would I move it to d3? So I would really recommend looking into this opening if you struggle against the French defense. Because I certainly did before I learned this. I played some two knight stuff. I had no idea what I was doing in all honesty. I lost a lot of games to a lot of well-prepared players. So this is my recommendation. And like I said, loads of other videos on my channel in this line where black responds like this, which is the most common move. So please give that a look if you're interested. If you stuck around till the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.